All right, so we're given a problem where we have to find the reactions at A and B. And this problem's a little bit different in the series here we have going on beam reactions where now we have, you know, a beam with just simple supports. You know, A is a pin, B is a roller. But we have this force at an angle, and it's not just at an angle, it's also at a distance away from kind of the x-axis, if you will. So if I define an x and y axis here, right, x being along the beam, this is at some distance away from it. So that complicates things a little bit. So the approach that we're going to take here is we're first going to go and find our uh, draw a free body diagram. And then we're going to go and solve for the components of this force. And once we do that, we can apply the equations of equilibrium and solve. So first, let's draw a free body diagram. And to do that, I like to copy this whole thing down, except take away the support symbols, because I like to replace those with uh, forces. And if this 60 kilonewtons is trying to rotate this thing kind of in this direction, we can kind of get an idea that, well, AY needs to bring it back the other way and BY kind of needs to go up. Okay, so you know, it just gives us an idea of which way to draw forces. So let me draw those in. And I'm going to draw BY, you know, going up and label it BY. AY going down, uh, label that one AY. And then AX here as well. We need to remember pin has a horizontal and a vertical force. So AX, AY, and BY. Those are our three support reactions. You know, we could, again, bring our uh, coordinate system down here, our positive sign convention for our equations of equilibrium. And, you know, that's where we're going. Okay, so that's kind of step one. We've gotten our free body diagram. And now let's go to components. And the components of this thing are a little tricky. So what I like to do is when I have components, I like to kind of dash them in here. And this is kind of small. You know, we could make it bigger. But I'm going to call this, like, let's call this CX in this for CY because this is at point C. Okay, so we have our components, uh, CX and CY, of, you know, big force C here, you know, our, our resultant force C. So in order to get those components, we know it's going to be, we're going to use, like, cosine and sine. But what I like to do with a problem like this is to kind of draw it a little bit bigger. So let me start there and draw it a little bit bigger. All right, so my geometry looks like this, where I drew the 60 kilonewton force bigger, right? And we know that this is still going to be perpendicular to that line, right? And this kind of helps us because it, it hopefully allows us to see things a little bit more clearly because we still have this horizontal axis. You know, this is kind of like our x-axis down here, okay? And we still can kind of hopefully apply those things that we learned back in high school geometry or college geometry. But we, we see here, hopefully you see it, these are going to be parallel, these two lines. And what that does is it gives us a couple of angles that are useful. So these are going to be our alternate interior angles, and we know those have to be equal. Okay. Likewise, we kind of know, um, based on the fact that this is a 90 degree angle, that we're going to have some other angles going on here, right? But if I draw another here, line here for my y-axis, right? What I know is this other angle, right? This angle here, I'll just draw two lines, has to be congruent or similar to this angle. Okay, and that's going to really help us because what we can do is we can start to look at these triangles. And this is fun because now we have a triangle that looks like this. And that triangle has to be congruent to uh, this other triangle that's been rotated 90 degrees, right? And we know that there's an angle here that matches. So once we have that, we can kind of take CY, go tip to tail. Let me put that in here. And if I bring CY over there, look what happens. Now we have two similar triangles. They're ones, you know, you could, you could picture the 90 degree, uh, you know, rotation here that's going to take this up and make it work. Okay, so that's, these two are congruent. But what it allows us to do is it allows us to apply our trigonometric functions, right? Because what we know is, for example, the, let's just start with the cosine. The cosine of, let's call this angle theta, okay? this angle theta, the cosine of this angle theta has to equal well, the, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So in this case, the adjacent is CX over our hypotenuse. And I'll label it here just so it's a little bit clear, our hypotenuse C. Okay, so C, the cosine of theta, again, is this adjacent over the hypotenuse. So CX over C. Well, this is the same angle theta. So the cosine of this angle theta has to equal our adjacent for our hypotenuse. And I didn't label hypotenuse yet, but we have one side is three, one side is four. And this is going to be a three, four, five triangle. So this member length is five meters. And when we take the cosine of this theta, we're going to get four meters divided by five meters. So this is the same theta. So I'm just going to put it right here. So this equals four over five. 
And from that, right, we can now say, well, Cx, if I multiply both sides by C, is just going to be four-fifths of C, which when you take four-fifths of 60, is going to be 48 kilonewtons. Similarly, if we apply our sine of, uh, of theta, right, what do we know? Well, if we look at the top here, so the sine of theta is the opposite, or Cy, over C. And likewise, on the bottom, the sine of this theta is going to be 3 meters over 5. And because they're the same, we can just, you know, put them right next to each other. We can e make them equal to each other. And we can solve, you know, for this one, we get Cy equals what? Well, 3 fifths of C, which is going to be 3 fifths of 60 kilonewtons. So from that, we get 36 kilonewtons. So now this is cool because what we've done is we've found our components and all we have left is to apply our equations of equilibrium. So let's go to that. I'll make a little bit more room here. Okay. And um, specifically, let's start with, well, let's just take the low hanging fruit. Sum of force in the x direction equals zero. I like to show that being positive to the right. So what we have is minus ax plus, what do we have here? Cx you know, plus CX equals zero. Well, we know that, you know, we just saw that CX equals 48. So we get AX, you know, uh, minus AX plus 48 kilonewtons equals zero. And if we flip things around and change our signs around, do a little bit of a uh, magic algebra, we get AX equals 48 kilonewtons. And that is kind of, you know, answer number one. Okay, so that's cool. We solved one. And then we can go to the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. And if we go, you know, up is positive, what do we get? We get minus a y plus b y minus, what else do we have? We have c y going down here. So c y equals zero. And the problem is now we have two unknowns. We have a y and b y, they're both unknowns. We have c y, which we know, but that doesn't help us too much. We can rewrite this a y plus b y put CY to the other side and just say, well, CY is going to be equals to 36 kilonewtons, but we still have two unknowns. So we need to apply our third equation, the sum of the moments. And again, you can pick any point for moments. I'm going to say the sum of moments about point A has to equal zero. And I like to use counterclockwise as positive. So sum of the moments about point A equals zero. What do we get? Well, basically there's two forces, well, you know, two forces that cause a moment. There's BY, and this C, but we're not going to use C. We're going to use the components. We're going to use CX and CY. Okay. And from that, now we can write a moment equation because what we have is some moments of point A gives us what? Well, we're going to say it's going to be BY times a moment arm of six meters plus, well, let's look. You know, we have we have CX and CY both causing moments. And before I put my plus sign down, I'm just going to put those forces in here, CX and CY. And we have to look at moment arms. Okay, so the line of action of the CX force, here's our line of action of that CX force, right? The perpendicular distance between that line of action and our point is going to be four meters. So this, you know, this moment caused by CX is going to be, you know, based on a, a moment arm of four meters. Okay, and likewise, we can take a look at CY, and we have our line of action here for CY, and this is going to be the whole distance, 6 plus 2 plus 3, so 6 and 2 is 8, and 3 is 11, so that's going to be times 11 meters, and that has to equal 0, and you might say, but you didn't put signs in yet. That's right, I haven't yet, so what I have to figure out is which way do these forces cause this member to rotate about point A. So if I look at point, you know, C and, and, and specifically with CX, I know that this is causing a rotation in that direction, which is a clockwise rotation that's opposite of our positive sign convention. So that one's going to be negative. So I put my negative sign in and then we look at CY as well. And CY, again, this one's causing a rotation in this direction. That's opposite of our positive sign convention here, which is the opposite direction. So that one is going to be negative also. I'll put my negative sign in. And now what I can do is I, I can substitute my CX and my CY in here and we can solve for BY. So when I do that, what I get, I'm just going to write it like this, BY times six meters. I'm going to, you know, put these two negatives to the other side. So I'll get CX, which is 48 kilonewtons times four meters plus, because it went to the other side, 36 kilonewtons times 11 meters. 
And when we work this out, we're going to get By equals 98 kilonewtons. So once we get that answer, you know, we can highlight it, put a box around it, you know, do whatever we want to do with these just to make it real clear that these are our answers. And that's answer number two. And now once we know that, we can bring this back up to this equation, plug it in, and finish our problem. So if I do that, I'm going to get this is AY equals BY minus 36 kilonewtons. So what I did there is I added AY to both sides, subtracted the 36 uh, from BY, and I'll get AY equals, you know, 98 kilonewtons here, minus 36 kilonewtons, which comes down to AY equals 62 kilonewtons. So that's our answer. We can highlight it. We can, you know, put a box around it and we can, you know, solve this problem correctly. Okay. So again, the approach here was, was pretty basic, but the approach here, what we needed to do is we needed to start with our free body diagram. Then we needed to go to the components. Once we did that, we were able to solve our, or apply our equations of equilibrium and come up with solutions. So I hope that helped, you know, and if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment, but otherwise keep working hard and moving onward and upward.